And now to a rare inside look into the secretive royal family of Saudi Arabia, overseen by a new crown prince who manages great wealth and people who have committed murder, Rhonda. He's the 35-year-old crown prince of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, more commonly known by his initials, MBS, Brian. We're joined now by Justin Check and Bradley Hope, the authors of a great new book, Blood and Oil, Mohammed bin Salman's Ruthless Pursuit of Global Power. Thank you both for being here. Uh, MBS, as he's known, started off, we thought, as a great reformer, but Justin, that's not the case. Well, you know, I, I think it's more complicated than that. I think he's someone who's intent on maintaining his power and his family's power in Saudi Arabia. And what he believes that requires is having social reforms to make the country's young population, if 60% of the population is below 30, reforms to satisfy them, but also clamping down on dissent, making sure any threats to the royal family are, are addressed. And that includes... Um, External threats like Iran, like Qatar, where he's been very aggressive. The most prominent target, dissident and Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi. Saudi Arabia confirms that the journalist Jamal Khashoggi is dead. And Jamal Khashoggi entered the Saudi consulate in Istanbul and never came out. After his death, a number of MBS associates were convicted, but not the prince himself. Well, it's not hard for him to do that because he is ultimately, you know, th him and his father are the center of power. So he's taken the position that he, he said publicly, it's my fault that this happened, but I didn't order the murder. He told them, take care of this guy. And they took it upon themselves to take care of them as they saw fit. And it, it looks like, you know, from the sort of the way things played out, it looks like they probably were trying to kidnap him when they realized that... <clears throat> would be inconvenient, they, you know, murdered and dismembered him. So they seem to be uh, acting on what they thought were his wishes. Whether he explicitly said it or not doesn't really matter that much because they were carrying out something on his behalf. Uh, you and Bradley have fascinating insights, inside you know, views of what's going on behind the scenes there, including his uh, acquisition of wealth and uh, status symbols, yachts, arts. Tell me a bit about that. Well, obviously, um, th this is one of the reasons why he had to fight so hard against all of these rivals, because when you become the king of Saudi Arabia, you are immediately, uh, you, you have an overwhelming wealth, you know, so you just suddenly you, you get the biggest percentage of the royal family's allocation of the oil profits, and you get access to all kinds of other money as well. So very early on, after all, all this wealth suddenly came into both his father and his own control, he went on a kind of a spending spree. He, um, he had this crazy party in the Maldives. It was meant to last a month, and he rented, it for, uh, rented out this hotel for $50 million, brought all these people over, 150 models, which we, we describe in, in the book. Um, and then he also bought this high-end yacht, the Serene. You know, famously, his, he, he and his team were flying over, uh, I believe, in the south of France, and they saw, the play, they saw this boat, and they decided to go take it for a spin, and then not that long after, they bought it at, at sort of the asking price. You know, they weren't, there was no negotiation, really. Um, and then there's also this immense chateau in France um, that looks like it belongs to, you know, uh, from the 17th century. And he's also, Justin, uh, sought some of the world's <laughs> most uh, priceless paintings. It's $400 million is the bid, and the piece is sold. You know, famously, uh, he was a, the mysterious buyer of a, of a Da Vinci, what's most likely a Da Vinci painting. It was a, the first, you know, new Da Vinci painting to be discovered or unearthed in, in you know, many, many years. And it has its own strange backstory, but, you know, it sold for this astonishing amount. And there was all the speculation about who the mystery buyer was. And it, it turned out to be a sort of front buyer for him. Uh, given what he wants in terms of global power, what has been his relationship with the uh, Trump administration? Well, um, really, his cultivation of the Trump administration was both the, the key to his own rise in power, and it's, it's the key to his b ability to stay in power over these pe periods of years and, and, and sort of fend off all of these threats to himself. You know? So by the, when, by the time the Donald Trump was first elected, um, MBS still had some issues about consolidating power. And he, what he did was he used that, he, he, he persuaded, along with his team, 
the, the administration that it would be worth their while to come to Saudi Arabia for their first foreign trip? What, what MBS wanted to do was to kind of go all out to impress Trump and make Trump feel not just welcome, but honored and, and treated as uh, you know, a, a great statesman and, and an international leader. And finally, let me ask you, how important is it to MBS that Donald Trump be reelected? I think it's tremendously important. Um, you know, he's really staked a lot of a lot of his power on on the relationship with America. The UAE just recognized Israel. If Saudi Arabia recognizes Israel before the election, that that could be a foreign policy win for Trump. So I think there's a lot riding there because if the Democrats come in, you know, when Biden was vice president, um, Biden's foreign policy people and Obama's were very skeptical of Saudi Arabia overall. And they expressed skepticism about the war in Yemen, even though they assisted with it in the early days. And there was, you know, Obama was uh, constantly reminding them of human rights issues. Um, King Salman felt that Hillary Clinton was, was lecturing him on human rights issues. And so MBS especially really mistrusts the Democrats and mistrusts their impulse to strike a deal with Iran and you know, it would be a real shift and it could, you know, cause Saudi Arabia to turn more toward China or more toward, you know, even, even Russia um, if, if Biden wins. Bradley Hope and Justin Sheck, thank you so much for being here. Authors of this great new book, Blood and Oil, Mohammed bin Salman's Ruthless Quest for a Global Power. Thank you both for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you.